So I'm Sean Hoskins. I am a choreographer and performer. And I work at the intersection of dance and technology. Um, part of that work is in my normal job as the dance technology coordinator at the University of Michigan Department of Dance, where I sort of supervise and, and main, maintain and manage their tech stuff. Like I'm their tech guy, which means a lot of things. I sort of I do a lot of graphic design um, and promotional work. I video um, and edit and archive their performances. Um, and I teach digital um, technology related skills to dancers um, and faculty members. But in my professional creative work, I have been incorporating some interesting technological elements to um, enable me to uh, sort of rethink composition of dances and also create environments, create and present environments that are not otherwise possible in traditional sort of dance on stage methods. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple of those projects a little bit more as we get going and, um, and I'll show you some video clips to uh, help you <laughs> because my verbal descriptions are probably not going to um, uh, suffice. And then um, I'm also going to talk more generally ab about my process and about sort of my perspectives in, in hopes that I can illuminate for us all um, how to open up a little bit more creative space in our days um, and how my way of sort of manipulating um, material and combining elements um, you know, might, be, might, might inspire you in your own work and lives. Um, great. So I'm, I'm going to use these slides a little bit as a guide and also this little crutch here. Uh, so, yeah. So, I'm a maker. Um, I make things and I, that, that really excites me. Um, I make dances and I make movement phrases and I make video projects, um, a really good casserole, uh, <laughs> and, you know, rethink sort of ways that dance and technology might work. And then there's this like um, corner built-in bookshelf in my house that I've been working on for considerably longer than I expected. But <clears throat> the point is that I, as a maker, I make choices. But we all make choices throughout our days, all the time. Like the ways that we get out of bed, um, you know, how you walked here, the ways that we construct sentences and craft meals. What makes choices creative? Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is awareness. Um, I went to Middlebury College uh, and sort of stumbled into an intro to modern dance class um, where I was asked to create from day one. They were like, here, make this, try this. Um, great, you know, how can you manipulate it further? And it was so satisfying and creatively engaging, especially in relation to my years of music training where I was just learning what someone else had written. I mean, it was like asking me to do the, the choosing. Um, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm really resisting sort of as I put this presentation together. I was like, well, maybe I could get everyone else to dance. Maybe I could. So <laughs> I'm resisting, and I'm going to save that for tomorrow night in the after party. Um, <clears throat> but in addition to the sort of studio work, we also, I had these assignments in a number of my classes where I had to, um, oh, shoot, sorry. So choices. So uh, <laughs> where I had to go out into nature um, and choose a spot and sit there and write about my observations. And now I realize how comically liberal arts that is. Um, but <laughs> but the, the combination of those two, the, the sort of um, awareness, the improvisational awareness prompts in the studio and the written reflections kind of combines to underscore a really interesting sort of process of awareness. Um, notice what you notice, they would say, my teachers. Notice what stands out for a particular reason. Notice what you notice. This particular, this like little gem has become um, really a, a large part of my creativity and also sort of my way of being in the world. It's an invitation to attend to that which captures your attention. Notice what you notice. And tied to that is the belief that if something stands out for whatever reason, there's some importance to that. 
I maintain a journal. Um, in it, I, w I write sort of resonant thoughts, things that come up, uh, pictures. I draw little stick figures of bodies of like, oh yeah, they could move in that way. Um, titles that come to mind, uh, just fragments of thought. And it takes diligence to make that common practice, but sort of the idea of collecting through my day, through your day, um, allows for you to sort of refer back to it and be like, okay, well maybe I'll, now I'll explore that. Unless, of course, you have the, uh, the, the time and the wherewithal to explore the creative potential of whatever thing it is right then, right? So you can so, sort of store it for later. Um, notice what you notice and, and trust that what you notice matters. My thesis work um, in, my, in grad school, and I did my grad work at the University of Michigan in the Department of Dance, <clears throat> it's sort of built upon this idea. I, put my, I took a research trip to Europe, and I put myself in these unfamiliar urban landscapes, um, and I navigated through them. I would go on these daily walking excursions. And um, sometime during the walk, I would find a spot where I'd set up a video camera, and I'd try to like dance the place. I would look at the architecture and listen and um, you know, sort of notice what I felt in the particular place for whatever reason. And I would try to translate that into movement. I, like I could dance the room. I could be like, oh, okay, well, so I've got, like, I've got a post and then I've got a little exit sign and I've got, you know, or something like that. So um, I'll show you a couple. This one is in Vienna um, on a back street. I was right behind a restaurant. I was looking at the sort of the archways, certainly the lines of the stone, the quietness of the street. Some of them were improvisational. This, I turned the camera off after I improvised and I made a set, a set phrase using the same kinds of ideas that were standing out and then I recorded that. Um, the next one is in Berlin. This is actually up against the Berlin Wall. Um, it's the other side of the East Side Gallery. And I was sort of struck with this, this idea of tension. I think it was sort of like my pro projected or sort of like thought about the history. Um, All right, um, so, so then I took those materials back to the studio at the University of Michigan and I had this material already built that I could sort of reference. But I noticed right away that um, they, these materials were so tied to the places in which they were created and my questioning about sort of geography influencing me and me influencing the geography that, I, that the traditional models of choreography and composition that, I, that were familiar to me didn't seem to fit. I needed something else. I needed like a way, I, I really wanted to find a way where I could translate the performing space or yeah, transform the, the performing space into a space in which I was navigating in real time and also recreate some of the environments in which the materials were created. So that's when I thought to, um, to incorporate technology. Uh, just to, let's leave that there for just a second. I want to talk just more generally about modern dance. Um, modern dance is, at its core, sort of pretty forward thinking and always seeking the new. Um, dances are often created and except if you're in like a big company um, or a repertory company, they're performed a handful of times and then they're, you know, and then they're sort of cast aside and somebody's, you know, onto the next project. <laughs> Um, and even dancers themselves are continually trying to, in, you know, explore unfamiliar movements or explore new ways of, of bodies interacting or new contexts in which to present their dances or new elements to incorporate in, on stage. Um, and so this, like, forward-thinking, ever-expanding, uh, 
you know, uh, thrust is something that I, that resonates within me as, as does outside the box thinking. Like I'm, I'm always kind of noticing my choices, thinking about what I've made before and being like, okay, well, how can I sort of make a new? Um, my relationship with technology has sort of evolved um, in, a, in a project by project basis. So there's a dance that, you know, that comes to mind that needs to be made. Like I can think of a dance for the camera that I felt like had to be made when I directed the dance program at a boarding school for a few years. And I didn't know anything about dance for the camera. I didn't know how to edit video um, or create a storyboard. So I sort of figured all that, so that out in, in order to enable me to do what I needed to do. And then I you know, learned how to overlay text, um, uh, recorded text on the top of pre-recorded music so that I could make another longer dance. And in graduate school, I learned about this performing arts technology major, which is in the music school, and they're doing some really cool things. Like um, I learned about Arduinos and you know, sensors and, um, and how you can assign, like take a video camera, the visual field of a video camera, and assign aspects of that to affect parameters in whatever your performance is, the lighting or the sound or whatever. Um, and so now, back to this project, I n noticing the, the desire to, to sort of do what I wanted to do, I, I invited a collaborator to the table from the performing arts technology major and we thought up this sketch, this, this environment where a video camera would be fixed on me and my movement in the visual field of the camera would be averaged and then represented by a dot. And then I, I sort of incorporated more visual elements, some projections, um, and sort of a sonic landscape to evoke and recreate these um, environments. So let's, here's a, here's a little clip of what that looked like. So yeah, so the dot is representing the average of motion in the visual field. It takes a, a little, it, there's a little bit of a delay. And then the crosshairs I included to sort of give people the, kind of the sense that it was happening then. Because I, I didn't know that people would know. And then we included a little bit of a light um, mini-me version on the map too. The map in the background is a, is a panning Google Maps image of Berlin, um, and I don't know if you, you probably, I'm not sure if you recognize, but some of that movement material was, was pulled directly and also recrafted from the recording I did behind the Berlin Wall. So it all kind of tied together in an interesting way. Uh, 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 where am I? Over here. Okay, so the point I want to make about that is that my willingness to sort of incorporate, to invite in and incorporate technology and use that in a way to sort of like stimulate the dance making um, and uh, allowed me to sort of think kind of outside the box, outside the, beyond, the boundaries of what I had um, experienced before in terms of choreography and really present a new composition and a new way of kind of, uh, of, of viewing dance. Um, <clears throat> all right. I just want to talk just generally about um, about creativity, which is kind of hard um, sometimes, right? Uh, but and, and I don't know, like I don't propose to know a, a ton about creativity, but I know what I experience, and my experience is is that um, the 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 inspiration, the sort of the the meat of the of the Create to, of what I create doesn't happen in like a flash of brilliant white light. Um, it happens through work. Um, creativity, sort of, it's work and it's ongoing work. It is getting myself in the studio or the playground or the castle gardens or, you know, wherever and making some choices. Uh, continuing to investigate, continuing to try. I had a professor at Middlebury College named Penny Campbell who 
talked about her work in improvisation, and she referred to it as an ongoing process, as a, as, sorry, an ongoing practice, a life practice, and a lifelong practice. Meaning that, you know, the expanded awareness and compositional, uh, composition in the moment that she sort of, that's required of successful um, dance improvisation was something that she continually practiced. And that bringing herself, like all of her, the, her likes, her dislikes, her, her, you know, history, her feelings to the present moment is essentially a practice of living. And you do it your whole life. So I've been making and dancing for a long time. And I feel like I've made a lot of stuff. Um, Isadora is a program. Oops. Oh, what happened? Ah, oh, there we go. Isadora is a multimedia presentation platform that I first sort of uh, learned about by seeing a performer like project some pretty cool things with effects behind her as she was dancing. And I, I learned enough about it um, to be able to introduce it to my students uh, because I thought, you know, they should know sort of that the tool exists. Um, <clears throat> and flash forward to this past April, I was invited to make a solo for, um, for a performance. And I was thinking a lot about identity and the construction of identity and how in each sort of new interaction we have, the information we present about ourselves sort of creates a frame in which we live, at least in the context of that relationship. So I thought about, in my composition, using Isadora to project myself um, behind me dancing, and then somehow interact with that projected image in an interesting way. Um, the technology, the technology sort of influenced my compositional choices. And then when I was sort of in the moment, uh, or in, sorry, in the studio working, composing, trying to make these phrases that interact, you know, that sort of fit in and around each other, that affected, that sort of sent me back to the program where I, I had to play with the effects, and then, it, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, this is kind of what I came up with, which... Um, which is something that, I, you know, which I, I'm going to be showing tonight at the pop-in anyway. So you'll see a little later then. What I ended up with is a three-second delay and then later a seven-second delay, which means sort of metaphorically that, like, the self the I self, as I call it, um, that's presented first is the frame in which I sort of have to act or around which I have to dance three seconds later. It's kind of hard watching, you know, like, it's hard, it's hard seeing yourself on, on video. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So again, using technology allowed me to sort of rethink the ways that I could be a composer and what my composition would look like. And it allowed me to create a new relationship between the viewer and the viewed um, and the performance and the performer. <clears throat> uh, each, cre each creative process is different. Sometimes we're inspired. And then it's easy, right? Then you have like an idea or an image and you just go. But sometimes I'm not inspired. Sometimes no dance is pressing to be made. And I get in the studio, pace around, And I make some choices. And, you know, it, all right, okay, then I have, all right, then I have that, and I have, that's, well, that's kind of interesting, right? So then I have this, and I have, oh, wait, what was that other, you know? So then, so I make some choices, and something gets made. And with the thing that gets made, I can do a lot of things with it. I can 
I can go further. I can discard it and say like, no, I actually don't want to make anything like that. I've made that dance before. Like, all right, I want to make, I, I want to make the not dance, like the, the, the dance that isn't that thing, like the opposite of it, right? So, so I love compositional tools. Oh my gosh, I love them. Like I love, you know, you can reorder a thing or you can embellish it or you can diminish it or you can, um, you know, translate something from up here into a different part of your body. Right? And so this is, you know, translate this into whatever, whatever field you work in, right? You can um, manipulate material and that's often enough to spark something, you know, some sort of further engagement in, out of, so something sort of gets created and then, all right, I'm excited in whatever, whatever thing happens. Or sometimes I'm like, ah, I'm just, that day's a wash, right? So I made a bunch of choices, no, nah, that's not it. But now at least I know that that's not it, right? So then maybe I can, maybe the next day is gonna be, all right, I'll make the not that. Um, <clears throat> one, uh, one more story that I wanna tell is, I was working on a dance um, when I was an undergrad and it ended up being selected to represent the Northeast region of colleges at the National College Dance Festival. But before that, I was like crafting the ending um, and I, I was paralyzed by this fear of messing it up. And overhearing that, a professor of mine said, well, what does that mean, really? How would you mess it up? And I thought about it for a second and I sort of said, oh, right. The only way I'd really mess it up is if I was careless or if I was disengaged, you know, and I, and I wasn't, but I, but I wasn't, I was engaged and I cared and I was crafting. So it turned out great. I've talked a lot, <coughs> uh, a lot about dance and probably more about dance than you tend to hear in your day to day. But hopefully, hopefully sort of, uh, I'm gonna, these are some takeaways um, that you can, apply to your own work and lives somehow. Notice what you notice and trust that what you notice matters. Which if you only get one thing actually out of the whole thing, I would love that that's the thing. Um, explore and reframe. A little bit composition, but you know, look at something from a different perspective. Get in there, do the, the practice. And don't be precious. They're just ideas and how would you mess it up, really. Thanks.